Hey guys, so in this video, I just want to talk about uh, a concept in new, Unity Visual Scripting, which is called uh, the subgraph. I think before it was called the super unit, now it's a subgraph, and it's basically a way for you to create your own custom nodes. Um, and so let's start, and let me just talk about and make the comparison with Scratch. So you know that in Scratch you can create your own block, so you have this My Block section where you can define a new block we, that accepts some parameters and you can say okay uh, this block will do this behavior so you can connect blocks to your own custom block and then you have a new block that you can use and when you use this block you're basically running the code or the blocks that you connect to the, the definition of this custom uh, block. In Unity Visual Scripting you have the same concept but it's called a subgraph and a subgraph is basically a nested graph or a graph a custom graph a custom sorry um, a custom node that you can create or actually a custom graph actually not only a node but a custom graph that you can create and use it on other graphs so let's see an example uh, of that just delete this this was an example uh, one, uh, for example, that we can see, not in the game manager, but here in Crosshair, for example, we could create a custom graph, a subgraph, and a custom node to move an object to the position of the camera. Just like in Scratch, we have this block, so the go to, we have the go to block, go to camera, no, go to mouse pointer, just like we had this go to mouse pointer, we can create something similar to this in Unity using a, a subgraph. So let's see how we can do it. So in Unity, in the crosshair uh, graph, we have this code, which basically is the same that um, of that go to mouse pointer that we had in Scratch. So you can see that on update, we are setting the position and the position. We are getting the mouse position and we are converting the mouse position from sc uh, screen space to the world space. And then we are multiplying um, by z equal to zero so that the, the sprite does not change the z value and the, the layer and then we are setting the position of the sprite so we could uh, create a custom node to do all this so that the next time that we want to just okay move an object or uh, move an object to the mouse position we can just use that node to do it and the way to do it is you can create a new node and it's called a subgraph so you create a new subgraph and let's call it here go to mouse position you can give it a title you can give it like a description and by default when you create a subgraph like uh, in this way you can see that it's an embed subgraph which means that you can only use it inside this graph but we want to create an actual graph so i'm just going to switch and this is going to create an actual asset that we can then just basically reuse this asset in other projects at least I, I think it works that way. So let me just go, go to mouse pointer. Go to mouse pointer. Now we have an actual asset in our project that we can probably just import into other projects and just reuse this node in other projects. And now when we open our go to mouse pointer, or if we go to the crosshair, you have the subgraph, you can open it from here as well. You can see that we have like a, the, the path here so we are crosshair go to mouse pointer that's where we are sorry that's where we are or you can just go, go to the mouse pointer graph and edit graph and it will open the window in that graph now here you can configure basically uh, what what are the inputs of this node and what are the outputs of this node so the first thing that you need to do is to create a trigger input and you need to give it the key and this key needs to be unique you can, Basically, you can create different kinds of inputs, like enter one. So you could have different um, flows, um, input flows that go into this node, and you could connect different uh, functionalities within the node depending on the input that uh, you select when you are using the node. Usually, I think you will probably just use once. That's the most closely related to all the other nodes that we've been using. And we're just going to hide label, so it looks like this, and then we on the output we create a new trigger output so that we can connect uh, uh, nodes after this node and we're going to also hide the label and now let's go back to the crosshair so you can see that our node is now looking like this so we have an input in the flow and an output of the flow and now we are going to just get 
all these nodes and I'm just going to copy it and paste inside our new node. And now basically what we need here is just to connect the input and the output. And all this will happen when we call the node. So now instead of, uh, sorry, now on the crosshair, instead of doing all this that we were doing before, and not only on the on the crosshair and on this project, we can we now we have a node that we can reuse in other projects as well. I can just use this subgraph and connect this here. And now all this code is inside the subgraph. So I don't need to worry about the implementation of the subgraph. I can just use my new node go to mouse pointer and it should probably be okay. Let's just, just check. Just remove the music. We start, and you can see that the crosshair is still uh, <coughs> following the, the mouse pointer. So it works, and it's a really cool way to just abstract all the, the implementations of some uh, stuff that we need to do in Unity. For example, I think this, is, this could be a really cool thing for when you are using the Unity Visual Scripting to actually teach the kids to code, kids that come from scratch. We could create just a whole library of uh, nodes uh, that are the same that you had in Scratch. So right now we have uh, a, a node that is closely related to this one. So the kid knows that in Scratch you use the go to mouse pointer and now in Unity it goes to go to mouse pointer, which I think it's actually pretty cool if we could just create nodes for most of the functionalities. Most of them, I think, I mean, most of them, I think we have like a close uh, relation to node. So we know that change X by something we could use like the translate and it's not like a complex node. But for example, to implement this go to mouse pointer, we have all this implementation and this touches in a lot of concepts that might be difficult at the beginning. So I think using a subgraph might be a good solution to this kind of stuff so that you can just give a, a starter project with some of these nodes and say, okay, when you want to follow the mouse pointer, just use this node. So uh, the kids don't need to worry about this implementation and later on they might even go okay now open that node and let's see what actually this node is doing and then they can learn about the camera and the screen to world point and all the, the implementation that we have in the node okay this is w one example of a node let's see just another one because this is a simple node that does not accept any input data inputs so let's see an example where we could just create a node to, that accepts uh, inputs and I'm just going to create a, a very simple node to do what we are doing here. So basically to set an integer to a text mesh pro label, because every time we try to set a, an integer, we need to convert the integer to string to set to the label. We could just create a node to do this for us. Of course, this is not a very complex node and not the best example, but it's just for you to, to see how you could cre create a node that accepts input values. And let's create a new node. Uh, let's see um, a subgraph and this subgraph is uh, let's call it set text no not set text set text is the other one so let's call it set integer for example now i'm not going to convert to into an asset i'm just going to leave it as an embed node and here we need to do the same so enter hide label and a trigger output exit hide label i don't know why I'm because I don't know enough about these subgraphs and the visual scripting, but I still don't, don't understand why we don't have already like a trigger input and a trigger, a trigger output already created by default, because I think most nodes will have at least an input. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure why I need to always create at least one of these. I think it would be better to already have them uh, created and so that we don't need to worry about like this input and output, but it's okay. And uh, now let's go back to the game manager. I'm just going to copy these two nodes, put them here. And basically, when we start this node, we are going to set the text in the text match pro. And basically, we need to convert the value. Now we need a way to um, get the value to inside this node so that we can use it to set to the label. And, that we, and for that, we can create a data input. Let's call it a value of type integer and basically you can use that value 
connect to, to string and this to the set label. Now, the only thing that we are missing is also another input to actually define what label we are talking about, because uh, this node will only work on apply to a game object that had this component. So let's just create a new input. So a new data input called label. This label is of type text mesh pro. I'm just going to put this first and we connect this here. And now we have this node accepts, accepts two inputs, gets an integer value, converts a string and sets as uh, the text uh, of the our label. Now let's go back to our game manager. And now instead of using what we have here, just going to put this here. So basically we are just like saving on one node. We are creating this custom node so that we wouldn't use this, but it's just an example to see how a node can accept values, uh, input values. So we could connect this here, here, and this here. And we have a subgraph set integer that accepts, that sets an integer to a text mesh label, and we don't need to worry about converting it into, into a string first. Okay, this is just an example of a subgraph uh, that accepts input values. Now, subgraph seems like a, a really powerful um, function feature that we have in Unity Visual Scripting. Uh, I think it would be really good for people, if we are using this for um, users that are coming from scratch into Unity, it would be really cool to create a whole library, and maybe I will even do that in the future, to create a whole library of custom nodes to abstract the more... Uh, complex implementation that we need to do in Unity that we didn't need to do in Scratch so that this transition is a lot smoother. But it would be also cool to, to, so that we could, uh, if we could customize these nodes aspect like the icon or the color, something like that to have a more visual approach, a visual aspect like Scratch or something like that or to differentiate these nodes from the other ones. I don't know. This is just like nice to have, of course. And I still need to investigate a little bit more about this subgraph and to understand these trigger inputs and outputs, why we should have or what examples or what cases we would have different inputs and outputs and how we can even create uh, overridable nodes. Not overridable, sorry. Um, overloading nodes, uh, method overloading. Like you have some, like we have on most of them when we say like, I don't know, set active. No, this is not the best example. The translate, for example. When you see the transform translate, you can see all of this. You have like one, two, three, four, five, six, six nodes uh, that are transform translate. And basically they differ from each other because they accept different parameters. So you can see that this accepts a translation and a relative to this only a translation, X, Y, and Z, and stuff like that. And this is code in code is called method overloading. So in the, in the way we have like node overloading and we would also like to explore how to create node overloading in my own custom node. But that's a topic for another video. So in this video, I'll just like to show you how to create these subgraphs and the possibilities that you have by creating your own custom nodes and that how you can create reusable nodes that you can like share between projects, which I think it's a really cool feature. And yeah, so this is it uh, for this video. So thank you guys. Hope I see you in the next one.